Hey everyone, it's Dylan and Charlie from the Black Forest Wood Company. We're back again for another week here in the shop. This is the second time that we've made this bottle casting. This is attempt number two. So we don't usually have things go wrong around here, uh, but it does happen and this time something went wrong. So you'll see what our mistake was and why we had to build this twice. This is a fun video. There's lots of cool stuff in this one, you guys. So I hope you enjoy it. Um, please leave a like on the video and subscribe. That really helps us out and hope you guys enjoy. Okay, so we have got another whiskey casting coming up. This one is a bottle of 40 Creek. Um, it's some limited edition, so this is like bottle 4200. Um, we were able to find it, I think, what was that place? Willow Creek? Willow Creek. Willow um, Park liquor store or something? Liquor store, yeah. Yeah. That's a big one. Yeah, they had it. And then what our client also wants is a block of wood in the bottom, so we've got this really curly piece of black walnut. So since um, the wood is porous and we want this to be crystal clear. We're actually going to put a seal coat on this before we put it in. Um, we'll seal it now and then probably in like three or four hours maybe we'll do the final pour. Um, probably even sooner than that we can get away with it but we just want to make sure we get no air bubbles. So this is our coat resin and it has a full cure time of 24 hours. So probably better to use this than like let's say the deep. Um, Deep would still work, it's just then you have to wait like a week for it to cure. So this this will be quite a bit better. So then to seal this, we literally just pour it on, rub it in. <laughs> and then I don't want to leave a whole bunch of excess on here, so after I rub it in, I'm actually just going to take a, one of those blue shop towels and buff all the excess off. Okay, so this is all done, and we're just going to kind of leave it to dry. It doesn't need to be fully cured when you actually go to do the final casting pour. It just needs to still be a little tacky. So that's why I said like three to four hours instead of the full 24. All right, so we've got our piece. It's um, it's not really too sticky anymore, just a little bit. So that's about the perfect time to, to put it in there. And then what I'm gonna do, just trying to be careful not to get fingerprints on it. I'm just gonna throw some super glue on the bottom just to try and hold it in place when we drop it in. Okay, we're gonna try and calculate how much resin we need to go on this thing. So we are seven inches that way, seven inches that way, and then our height, I guess I should check, see how high this is gonna go. Hey, we wanna go a bit above. We'll go like 14.5. And then that's a 750 mil bottle. So I'm gonna go seven times, seven times 14.5 is this, divided by 61, 11.64 liters. So we'll go minus 0.75 about 10.89, 11 liters. We'll probably just end up mixing 12 because that's really easy to divide by three for the two to one mix. All right, so we're doing 12 liters and I'm just gonna go with the markings that are on the bucket. So we will need eight liters of resin. That's up to this line here. I don't know if you guys can see my finger through the bucket. So something else that we haven't went over in a while, but we still do for every pour is we actually degas them. So we've got these two chambers here. They're dirty, as you can see we use them all the time. Um, but essentially what happens is you put your resin in here, you turn the pump on, and it actually removes all of the air that's either trapped inside from your mixing or when you poured it in. So we'll place our top on. You've got two valves here. This is your release uh, into the atmosphere and then that is for your pump. So we'll start the pump. We'll open up the pump valve and then watch this little dial on the front. So we've got everything mixed. The resin's degassed, it's nice and clear. Sauger's just gonna hold this little wedge here while I pour so the resin lands on here and kind of flows down slowly and doesn't make bubbles as opposed to just dumping it all in. After we get it poured in, we have to then move it into the fridge here. So we've got a spot cleared out on the bottom and this is just gonna stop the epoxy from heating up too much. So let's, let's see how this goes. Thank you. 
That is so nerve wracking the whole time doing that. I'm like sweating. <laughs> Now we can relax. <laughs> that is the hard part there. So we don't leave this in for the whole time, probably sitting here for 48 hours. Once it's kind of started to gel up a little, then we'll take it out to finish off. But yeah. Okay. So checking out our pour. The fridge was unfortunately left open at some point. Um, Joe said it looked good this morning but now we've got all the wax melting out of the top. We got bubbles coming out the cap. And basically at this point, all we're hoping for is that the whiskey's still okay and we can get that out somehow. Um, but we do have to go buy a new bottle. We'll see what happens here, but yeah, uh, mistakes definitely still happen sometimes, you guys. It might be messy, but should we drop it? Outside? Yeah, I think we should. I think that would be fun. Yeah, Alright, let's go drop it. <laughs> We're dropping it. <laughs> Yeah. Put the lid back on now. Oh yeah, oh yeah, we can, we can sell it. Yeah, yeah, that's all good, good. <laughs> wow, that's beautiful. Did the glass even break? No. Glass no. didn't break. I'm no. thoroughly impressed. Glass didn't break. That's crazy. Quick, get some epoxy, we can fix it. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually unbelievable. Well, don't let the whiskey go to waste, Joe. Yeah. yeah. I don't, I can't. That's a hundred dollar bottle Spencer's whiskey. the whiskey lover. <laughs> I don't really like it when my whiskey's infused with uh, resin chemicals. Yeah, they call that whiskey business. <laughs> <laughs> so this is now our second attempt. Uh, we had to go buy new bottle of whiskey, re-pour it, redo everything. Uh, this is a limited edition bottle of whiskey too, so it's actually kind of hard to find. But we did it. So now we're using our jointer. We are flattening one side of the piece so that we can have a, a reference face to put it through the planer. And that's what you see Joe doing right now. Um, this will just get it to a perfect dimension on two faces and then I believe for the next two cuts uh, he'll probably join an edge and then use the panel saw to finish it off. So here's the panel saw. Um, because our blade can only go so high obviously we have to do this in two different steps so Joel will cut it like this, flip it over and then make the cut in the other direction. Right here, Joe's just putting on a, a pretty big bevel on the outside just to give it kind of a gem look. And then here, he's taking it all the way up to 4,000 grit. So this is what we sand to before we start polishing. You have to spend a lot of time on these steps to make your polishing easier. So here we're using the shaper again, and we've actually done a video tutorial on this, so we'll link it there. Um, we also sell these in our store and online if you guys want to check them out. It just makes doing these kind of precise inlays a lot easier. We don't actually know what we're doing yet, but this is the first attempt that we're gonna have. So we did what we normally do for our bottle castings and we sanded this guy all the way up to 4,000 grit. We haven't put any polishing compound or anything on it yet, but we just got this bad boy and we're about to put polishing compound on it. We're gonna cut it and then polish it and see how it turns out. So we were taught how to step these up. So we start with the 300 and because the 300 doesn't actually have much of a lubricant itself, we add a little bit of the 2500 and these are not 
going by grit. This, this is not 300 grit and 2500 grit. It's just whatever the polishing company makes it up as. So, Someone in the uh, comments will probably explain it to us. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, you guys <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah. So we start with the 300, add a little bit of 2500 for lubricant so that it doesn't dry out the piece. And let's get started. Okay guys, so, so far the polishing has been going very well. If you take a look, this thing is absolutely brilliant. It looks fantastic. It has a little bit of the compound on it still, the polishing compound, so I'm just gonna take that off for you guys. And then we get to see just how nice and shiny it really is. Okay, so my final thoughts on this is that it couldn't be any better, to be honest. It is immaculate absolutely fantastic it's so shiny uh, and we can't wait to put the nano coat on it and have it all finished up well i hope you guys enjoyed seeing that process uh, we kind of like sharing our screw-ups with you guys just so you can see that uh, things don't always go perfect around here and we do have mistakes that happen and we have to fix them so this one was a little stressful because it's a birthday gift so it was time sensitive uh, we'll be able to get it shipped out next week no problem and then next week as well, we're gonna show you guys this table. So it doesn't look like much, uh, like much right now, but it's Buckeye Burl with a turquoise resin. We've got the whole process film for this. So it's also getting one of those X spaces right over there. Um, so stay tuned for next week and we'll be sharing this with you guys. Uh, but I hope you guys enjoyed and we'll see you then. <laughs> that was a solid end. That was good. That was a good snowball. He's got on camera charisma. He's got wood stuck in his beard though. Oh.